Admiral's personal log, December 30th, 1939. Germany has been under the grasp of a madman for six years now. This man has seized more and more power over the past several years. He has dipped his finger in every pie he's been able to find, including mine, the Kriegsmarine. Normally politicians know to steer clear of military strategy and doctrine. They tell you they need something done. How you perform the task is up to you. This is the way I like it. This time, however, is vastly different. Our leader knows best for all, including the Navy. The past several years have been extremely rough on the Kriegsmarine. We have been ordered to scrap every warship we have. Our predecessor... My predecessor resigned in protest over these orders. Our navy used to be comprised of several dozen destroyers, light cruisers, heavy cruisers and a few battleships. Now we have none. What was all this for? For the construction of a mere two ships. Wunderwaffen that the great leader has thought up. I fear this is a losing strategy. We cannot have a navy of a mere two super battleships and hope to project enough power. Tomorrow, we're going to war. Our new ships are ready. It'll be my job to manage a grand total of two ships and win the war on the seas. My strategy is to cause the destruction of the Royal Navy on such a scale that they'll beg us for a peace treaty. With a mere two ships, that is the only thing I can do. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to a new campaign. This time around, Germany, 1940. We have a huge shipyard. This required an editing of the save file and I'm going to show you in a separate video how you can do that so you too can build really big ships. The strategy for this one is to build two super battleships, both worth 130,000 tons of displacement. These are the only two battleships that I'll have. This means that I will not project enough power to uh, prevent any kind of a blockade. I will probably immediately be blockaded which is not going to do very well for my naval budget. Of course, if one of these ships gets damaged, it's going to be 50% of my firepower out of the fight. And on top of that, it's going to probably cost an arm and a leg to get it back into the fight. So I'll probably have to keep quite a large amount of naval funds in reserve. Now, let's get to designing. I'm going to make two different designs. They're going to be sister ships of sorts, but with two separate armaments. We're going to have the Bismarck and the Tirpitz. This is Bismarck. Now, this is not the Bismarck as you might know it. This is a, quite a different ship. The plan with this ship is to get a lot of different firepower to make her capable of engaging all sorts of different threats. In order to do that, she is going to be pretty heavily armed. And pretty heavily armed means she's going to have 12 18-inch guns. Yes, that is more firepower than Yamato. She is going to have a supporting armament of a couple of 8-inch guns. These are triple 8-inch guns, and with these she can hurt cruisers. They are going to be quite capable, but not necessarily sufficient to deal with the destroyers. That's what the 5-inch guns are here for. These 5-inch guns fire every 16.9 seconds, but... That is in the unupgraded version. The upgraded version fires every 10 seconds. And that means that we can put out 12 5 inch shells per side every 10 seconds. This will be the bane of destroyers. Because on these ships you have a few spots to go with 3 inch guns, that's what I'll deploy. I'm going to go with a triple here and another couple of triples there. Now then. We're going to have to do quite a bit of work on keeping this ship alive. And that means I'm going to go with uh, all sorts of systems which will help the ship survive. I'm going to make sure that she is very heavily armored. That she is going to be um, as protected as possible. While still making sure that the ship is feasible. Uh, we're going to use pretty serious anti-flooding here. I want to have the ship as maneuverable as possible. Because 130,000 tons... Uh, it doesn't just slow down, generally. It doesn't really quickly turn. So, what I could do is... Yeah, my turning circle is 574. That's not great. Um, that's an unbalanced rudder already. I could go with AUX3. 
And I believe electric one. Yeah, this one gives you less flash fire chance, i.e. none. This one increases your flash fire chance slightly. And also reduces water pumping. But it does boost your, tur uh, your turning circle. At the same time, you could argue, well, maybe that's not too worthy. And flash fires are a bigger concern. Because if a, an 18-inch triple turret goes up, then you're probably going to be concerned with different things. And you might be very right about that. This ship, currently 123,000 tons, but we need to make sure she survives every single encounter. The only thing that should be capable of hurting this ship is a flash fire. Five inch superstructure armor should be sufficient to make quite a dent in, uh, or actually to not, <laughs> to not have the British make quite a dent in this ship. I have to shift the tower back slightly. Ah, damn it. The problem with the game is that some of these turrets don't like to stick to their towers. I believe that this is a more feasible setup. The reason why I'm going with uh, advanced, no, sorry, modern secondary tower 6 as opposed to advanced tower with funnel 4 is that this one has slightly better positioning for weapon systems. It is just slightly better for the type of armament that I seek for this ship. So let's deploy the 8 inches again. And the 5 inches, 5 incher triple, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a couple of triple torpedo launchers, but I still need to adjust these. They're going to be uh, electric. Uh, let's go with 24 inch torpedoes. It's pretty rare that you roll 24 inch torpedoes right at the start, so it should be very interesting. If these things manage to hit you, you're going to be either dead or extremely heavily damaged. Because these things do 2,000 damage per hit. To contrast that, the shells that are fired with this do 1,400. And those are currently standard, but I might eventually switch to heavy shells for a total of 1,500 damage. Let's put another launcher here on the stern. I know it's going to slightly impact the stern, but it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, this funnel... Oh, actually, does that give me more positions to put triples? Three inches? No, that was another tower. Sadly. Uh, we're slightly too heavy now. Uber Funnel 7. Still slightly too heavy. What engine did I put on this ship? Yeah, see? We're not done yet. Because um, what I put on this ship is geared turbines. Double geared steam turbines. I think diesels might be more suitable. Oil 3 is already set. I don't really need all that range. And that fixes it. And now, <laughs> the ship has an aft offset. Lovely. Uh, that means we're going to have to shift the whole thing forward. But I can't, because not all the guns would like to join me. It is these. These guns don't like to join. No, you can sit there. Oh, there's another slot. There. All right. Uh, forward. One notch ought to do it. Yeah, you can sit. Fix your damn editor. Sorry, sometimes this game can be a little frustrating, especially when it comes to editing ships. Stuff like this, I think, should have been patched out long, long ago. There we go. 0 0.7 inch aft weight offset. That's something that's fairly easy to fix. I just shift the torpedo launcher slightly further forward. And I potentially have room for another small gun. I don't know. I know it's not an American battleship. Yeah, because that's a fantastic spot to be shooting from in the middle of the fight. <laughs> no, probably not. It also means I don't have full firing arc there, and I would very much like a forward firing arc. Um, slightly more four weight armor fixes the issue. There, 10.8. 10.7. Very good. Now I have slight amount of displacement left. What do I put on that? That's a bit heavy. Ox 4. That's a bit heavy. <sighs> what do we put on there? More bulkheads. Nope. More speed? 28 knots? Nope. 27.5 knots? Nope. Damn it. 
More range? Nope. Okay, toss it onto the superstructure. Nope. <laughs> Fine. 18 inch armor on the guns. Yes. How far can we go? Not very far. Okay, more conning tower armor. Last thing I need is that the conning tower gets damaged. There we go, 130,000 tons. That completes the construction of Bismarck. Saved. All right. The other design is going to be turpits. Turpits. Turpits is going to be a bit different. She is mostly comprised of the same superstructure, but with a twist. She is going to have uh, both bigger and smaller guns. Let's see if I can fix this. Yeah, there we go. The Turpitz is going to carry 20-inch guns. She's going to have triple of those on the lower segments of the ship. And they're going to be boosted with 16-inch turrets to deal with, well, with pretty much anything. Because this ship, with this type of armament, can handle anything that they throw at you. It's just less of a uniform armament than uh, the other ship does. We're going to go with stereoscopic rangefinders because I get more long-range gunnery accuracy. Autoload, electrohydraulic. Uh, yep, yep. Boost everything. Super heavy shells because I can. Barbette 3, she's going to be slightly heavily protected, but she won't turn as well. She's more of a, uh, a standoff a ship. And to that end, I'm going to give her... I can give her a turbo electric drive. Turbo electric drives are nice because they give you more turn rate and more deceleration as well as a whole bunch more acceleration. Uh, my turning circle, however, is still very high at 751. I can push it down. 674. It's, it's getting there, but it's a bit heavy for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to have to have this ship fight at greater range. Um... Let's give her an all-round firepower of 6-inch, but in a slightly different config. This way she's going to have more firepower, at least when it comes to uh, the number of shells that she puts out. And let's see, we're going to back it up with 4-inchers. Four, 4, 4, 4, 4. Armor? Oh, armor's not that good yet. We're going to have to reduce the torpedo blisters and put that on armor. Because I want at least 9 inches of armor there. We're going to go with 16 here. Uh, this is going to be 18. That's going to be 18. Ship is slightly heavy on her sterns because of this gunnery battery. Slightly farther back, these 4 inches. These 4 inches are mostly here just to balance the ship out. Strategic weapons in that sense. Uh, we still have room for a couple of three inchers. Threes. There, there, and here. Four is point zero four. There. Okay. Superstructure needs to improve because I could get burnt down. 3.2 inches should be sufficient. Especially considering I'm fighting at some, at, uh, ideally, greater range. Main deck, 8.5 inches plus 118%. Four deck, 4.7, aft deck, 4.7. 16 inches of main belt, 9 inch 4 and 9 inch aft. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's rather important, isn't it? Ah, the turbo electrics are nice, but they're too heavy. With diesels, I get even more displacement. If you're going to offer me that much displacement, I will happily take it. Probably... P Sorry, what? A 4,000 ton radio direction finder? That weighs more than a destroyer? What the hell? What sort of radio are you putting on there? I'll pass. You better be getting Netflix with something like that. Uh, 30 knots. I need to be able to dictate speed more. Torpedo blister can go to Torp 3. We can get reinforced bulkheads to reduce the flash fire chance. No, we can't. Uh, well, mostly. Mostly. It'll be sufficient. 
Let's reduce four belts slightly, aft belts slightly. Game is lagging like crazy now. Superstructure 3-1, three, 3. Give me a 17 inch conning tower. Something I did is something that the game really didn't like. I'm not sure what it is. All right, we have a 17 inch conning tower set, three inch superstructure, aft deck, four, seven, uh, aft belts, and four belts, eight, five, main deck, eight, five, 16 inch our main belt. That's the turpits. And she's done. Now, we're going to construct one of each, build ship. Yes, I'll take one. Uh, they are fairly cheap. No, they're not. They're going to cost 527 million. That's the Bismarck. And there is the Turpits. I will only eat one of these or have one of these. The port is going to be Hamburg for both. I need to have both of these ships out fighting the British as much as they can. The building is instantly completed. Now, let's adjust my finances because I'm not going to do any research. I'll gladly take as much transport capability as possible and boost my crew training as much as possible. Because I'm going to need a lot of that. Um, I don't think I'm going to be seeing encounters every month. It's not likely. We have our two battleships. <laughs> the Brits have four, they have two battle cruisers, they have 11 heavies, 16 lights, and 21 destroyers. Right. Bring it, Brits. Oh, Jesus. They start out with a battle that involves both the Bismarck and the Turpets. That's not necessarily a good situation, because if both of these get damaged, I have zero power projection. <laughs> so I better make sure that both of these survive ideally intact. Now we are on a border defense mission. And immediately the ships open up to repel the aggressors. What do we have here? You are the heavy cruiser, are you not? 12 9-inch guns, a triple five which is over there in the middle of the ship. Eight three-inchers and two two-inchers, as well as torpedo launchers in a quadruple formation there on the bows. Then, what the hell are you? It's a light cruiser with four single seven-inch guns and one triple three-incher. They do carry quite a lot of torpedoes, though. I wonder if they're able to turn these at all. Because it looks to me like they're going to collide with the superstructure and the funnel. We're also looking at a good number of destroyers. These carry nine five-inch guns. And I'm seeing torpedo launchers here. And that's it. Now, they could be a nuisance with their numbers. But beyond that, I think there aren't that much of a problem. Now, let's admire the turbots in all of her glory. Um, I gotta say, this 16-inch turret looks almost miniature when you compare it to the 20-incher in front of it. We have our side armament of 12 6-inchers, we have our 4s, and we have our various of 3s. This is going to be a nice thumbnail here. Thank you very much, Thurpitz. Next up, Bismarck. With her 12 18-inch guns. A bunch of 8 inchers, 5 inchers, and to back it up, the 3 inchers and the torpedoes. Torpedoes are something that Turpids does not get. Uh, this might upset greatly the World of Warships players, but that is not really my problem. Now, accuracy is going to leave uh, quite a bit of room for improvement. We're currently sitting at a 0 0.9. The enemy being at 20 kilometers and being pretty small is not really helping anything. We're going to hit this target up, that's the plan, because everything else is either vaping or uh, fast or, s well, small. So it's not that likely to take a hit. There we go, bigger target, better accuracy. There is... Oh, you're the light cruiser, you're following the heavy cruiser. Wow, did you see that? That ricocheted off of the ship. The only thing that I suppose could ricochet off of a ship like that is the 16-incher. But consider that this ship fires super heavy shells. 
I wonder if the British designed some sort of tank in order to not... Oh, that looked painful. Uh, in order not to take too much damage from these smaller shells. It does look like your tank needs a bit more bulkheads. You got very few of them, don't you? You're going to fire high explosive, Turpits. High explosive 20 inch and 16 inch ought to be sufficient. Because if one of those lands, you're going to be in trouble. There is the lightly colored 20. Oh, sorry, lightly colored HE. What's the range? Don't like getting too close. 15 kilometers. Okay, that's close enough. I do expect that Bismarck's 18 inches are also going to do something useful. She is slightly farther away. Oh, she already has a 6% accuracy. She's good. Go on. Bismarck's on fire. Yep, yeah, there you go. That was 2,000 damage with a 20-inch high explosive shell. Dead. First kill. 1.5% chance to hit the target. 14 clicks, 14 clicks. Let's stay... Oh, <laughs> that's your light cruiser, isn't it? Let's stay at range, at least for now. Bye-bye. Until I figure out what these things are armed with, and then I know whether it's safe to push in or not. I would like to draw your attention to the more gradual sinking of these ships. I believe this was implemented in version 1.03. And normally when you hit a ship and sink it, the ship immediately comes to a stop and sinks. With the current way that the ships are portrayed, that's no longer the case. Okay, there's the Opportune. It's a destroyer worth 17 million, and that's because they are very quick. 40 knots. Powered by uh, steam steering, interestingly, but diesel engines. They carry the 5-inch guns and they have torpedoes out to 12 kilometers. So if I stay at 12 kilometers, which I'm currently not, then I should be fine. When it comes to repairing my uh, Wunderwaffen shifts, I am very much relying on the fact that damage currently seems to be calculated on a percentage basis. Which means that if a battleship takes, for example, uh, a few hits, but only lo ooh, shit, uh, only loses a few percent of its hit points, it's not that expensive. That is very much unasked for. Oh dear. <laughs> the Bismarck has returned fire with her torps. Okay, uh, yeah, we're going to have to turn maximum. Anyway, um, if a, a battleship takes a percentage-based amount of damage, then that usually means that it takes them far less time to repair than a destroyer, which loses about half its hit points, if not more. I suspect that Opportune is going to lose a little more than that. Now, I'm going to run away with the Turpits a bit more than with the Bismarck, because I don't mind one of my ships being down for repairs, but not both. Go on. That's going to hit. Damage? 50. <laughs> what sort of torps are you firing? 21 inches? Really? Okay. Interesting. Come on, I need one hit. One, yeah, there you go. You appear to be missing half your stern. Who did that? Turpets? Oh, it was a light cruiser torp that hit me, actually. So it could have been a different caliber. It could have been an 18-incher. I don't know that for certain. Anyway, I have lost 2% of structural integrity. I should be fine. I have no idea how well this campaign is going to go. I did a little bit of a test run to see whether it is feasible. It seems to be feasible, but I haven't played that deep into the campaign to do my testing, so I don't know whether it's really going to work out in the long term, or if this is just some sort of 
three or four episode adventure because by that time the British have taken a huge amount of damage and my battleships haven't. There goes their next destroyer, the Etric. No idea where my torps are at. Oh, extensive fire. See, this is why I generally don't use these super ships. Um, they're too powerful. The campaign currently is just not designed for them. They're just not really that enjoyable to use. I mean, yes, they're fun. That's why I only did one video on the 20-inch campaign. They're fun. But the AI... Oh, bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> the AI just doesn't know how to counter them. It can't. Even though Great Britain in this campaign has a bigger budget, it can't counter them. It doesn't have the brain power to do so. What I would love to add, if I could add anything to this game, is a learning AI. One that goes, okay, this is the type of ship that uh, the player has built, and this is most likely the best way to counter that. A system like that would make this thing, this game, so much better. But sadly, I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh, Torp's out from the Bismarck. Look at that. That's a proud display of German firepower. How much damage have we caused with what? Well, the 5 inches and the 8 inches have proven useful. Turpets? 16 inch, 8 inch, sorry, 12 inches doing far, no, 20 is doing far more work. And 6 inches pitched in with a few hits, but nothing too serious. But you can already see that this is going to cause the complete destruction of this British task force. And I only lost 2%. The only way that I see this campaign being somewhat balanced is normally you might have 4 battleships to the tune of 50, 60,000 tons. I have uh, basically all my battleships in this battle group and I don't get any more. I cannot build any more. Uh, we're just not going to find any more ships in the German fleet. There goes the Sandfly. Look at that. 30,000 damage done, 76 damage taken. The only ship currently surviving, albeit briefly, is the Ware. And that's going to end now. Now, like I said in the Admiral's Log, the only way I see us winning this is with a ton of victory points like that. I have scored so many more victory points like that than the British have that I expect the British to come running pretty quick. Pretty quick indeed. There. Damage to my ship. Some. Um, she is going to take a bit of cash to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is accurate. Wait, that's accurate? 22 million a month? Good lord. 23 million a month in maintenance. Jesus. Okay, well, they're slightly expensive. So be it. I have 864 million saved up in case I get blockaded and or in case my ship gets damaged. Right, that should conclude this first episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. And uh, I shall see you soon for the next episode.